It has been a while since we looked at a light that will fit into a two foot by four foot tent, so I am pretty excited about this one. Welcome to the Hippie Geeks. Let's take a look at the Spider Farmer SE 4500 bar style grow light and see how it does. This is the second of the newer Spider Farmer bar style grow lights that we have looked at now, and this one has also come from them almost fully assembled. If you remember any of their bar style lights from a couple of years ago, they all required quite a bit of assembly, including attaching all of the light bars to the support bars. While these ones have both been mostly assembled, we just need to attach the LED driver and the control box, and we will be good to go. As always, the light has come to us packaged really well, and it looks like it survived the trip across the ocean in one piece, which is really nice to see. Inside the box is the light itself, the extras baggie, a sheet of stickers, and the LED driver. The driver bracket clips into the grooves on the top of the light bars, and then the control box gets slid down onto the driver bracket. This is a completely toolless process, which is really great to see. Looking into the bag of extras, you can see that we have the power cord, which is a nice thick one, the connector cable for running this light in parallel with another one, and four ratcheting hangers. I can't believe it, they are finally starting to put in four of these hangers just like I have been asking them to forever now. Sometimes I will only use a pair of them, but especially in a narrower tent like a 2x4, I will sometimes use one in each corner, and I love that this light actually came with four of them. Speaking of the ratcheting hangers, I also love that they have integrated the hanging holes into the framework of the light itself, and it has made it really easy to hang the light in the tent in a way that feels very secure. The last thing to check out before we take a look at the light levels is the control box to look at how it works. When you first go to turn the dial up, you will notice that the light will jump directly from 0 to 11%, and that is the minimum level at which the light will turn on. After that, if you move the dial slowly, it will increase 1% at a time, and if you move the dial faster, the level will go up even faster. If you push the dial in, that will change the function of the controller, and the green light will move up as well. You start out with the light being controlled by the dial on this light specifically, and the first time you push the dial in it will set the light to be controlled by another one that you have hooked up to it. Pushing the button in one more time will turn the light off, and then pushing it again will cycle back to the light being controlled by the dial. First up, we are going to be measuring the PAR levels with the SE4500 EVO hung at 12 inches above the sensor, and the nice thing about this light is that it almost completely fills the tent, with only an inch or so between the sides of the light and the tent walls. What this means is that we are not going to see the usual weirdness where the light levels around the edges drop off really hard at these lower hanging heights, only to pick up as the light gets raised. With this light in a two foot by four foot grow tent, we are going to see the highest light levels at every point in the tent at this height, and then it will start to fall off everywhere as the height is raised. At 12 inches, we are seeing anywhere from 530 and 660 par in the far corners, while in the middle of the tent, we are going to be seeing over 1100 par. These are really intense light levels, and for most things you are going to be growing, you will want to either move the light further away or dim it down with the dial to get into a more reasonable range. Moving the light up to 18 inches away from the sensor shows all of the light levels starting to drop off like we talked about a minute ago, and we are seeing almost 900 par in the center area of the tent, with the far corners ranging from 500 to just over 600 par. Our light was pulling 326 watts from the wall with it turned all of the way to 100%, and we tested it at a few more light levels as well to give you an idea of how much power it will pull from the wall at different settings. With the dial set to 80, the light was pulling 266 watts from the wall. When we moved it to 60 on the dial, the light was pulling 198 watts. With the dial set to 40, the SE4500 EVO was pulling 133 watts from the wall. Moving the setting down to 20 on the dial brought the power draw to 67 watts, and finally setting it to 11% on the dial showed that the light was pulling 39 watts from the wall. These are all pretty great power numbers and are very similar to the power draw that we were seeing from the SE3000 that we recently checked out, just in a different form factor. Next up, we are going to move the light to 24 inches above the sensor, and in the center of the tent, we are going to see just over 760 par. While it is going to be between 460 and 547 par around the edges of the space, this would be a really great spot to hang the light for a lot of the things that folks are going to typically be growing in a tent like this, especially with being able to dim the light to your desired level as well. 
We did a lot of measurements with the light dimmed as well, which is what the par X numbers that you see are for. With the light hanging at 24 inches like this, and the center par level at just over 760 with the light turned all the way up, the way to figure out what the levels would be at a different setting is to multiply the par reading by the par X number that is the closest to the setting that you want. Let's say that we have the light set to 60 on the dial, then we would multiply 762 by the par X number, which for 60 would be 0.63, giving us 480 par. You can do that with any of the readings on these charts, and that should get you pretty close to the right par level. Now that we have moved the light up to 30 inches above the sensor, we are seeing a maximum of 647 par in the center area, with the light levels staying pretty constant between 408 and just under 500 par at the far corners. I forgot to mention it earlier in the video when we were unboxing the light, but it is really incredible how little this light weighs, especially with how much light it is putting out. Grow tents are built to handle a certain amount of weight, and even with heavier lights, most tents are able to support them with no problem. That doesn't mean that they are exactly easy to hang it in the tent, and I was always afraid that I was going to accidentally drop one somehow when I was adjusting the height and end up crushing the plants. That never happened, thankfully, but it is also not something that I will have to worry about with this version of the light, which is really nice. Moving the light up to 36 inches above the sensor has really started to even out the light levels across the entire canopy, with the center par reading at 570, while the outer corners are between 347 and 445. For the amount of light you are getting at this hanging height, you would be better off actually hanging the light a little lower and then using the dimmer to bring the par levels down, as you would be able to save on electricity that way. However, if power draw isn't a huge concern for you, it is definitely easier to work inside of the tent when the light is hung higher in the tent, giving you space to work underneath it. These light levels would allow you to grow a lot of different things, however, especially if you are using it with a longer light cycle. For example, this is the par level range that we like to finish out our autoflower grows with their longer light cycles, though again it would be better to get these par levels by dimming the light down a bit with the light itself hung at 24 to 30 inches above the plant. Finally, with the light hung up at 48 inches above the sensor, we are looking at 431 par in the center area of the tent, with between 277 and 331 in the far corners. These are actually really decent numbers considering how far from the sensor the light is at this point, but really you shouldn't be hanging the light this far from whatever you are growing, just move it closer and reduce the power level on the dial. The only real exception to that is if you are trying to absolutely minimize the amount of heat that is actually on your plants, as keeping it this far away will keep the plants as cool as possible. We have had a lot of questions from folks in really hot and humid climates on how to give their plants the best chance at thriving in the heat, and that means reducing the heat in the tent as much as possible. Move the light up as high as you can, have a ton of airflow, and hopefully run the lights at night to take advantage of the cooler weather. If you are looking to put a really great light inside of a two foot by four foot tent, this would be a spectacular option at a really good price. I love that we are seeing more and more Evo versions of their grow lights, as those diodes should really help out with energy usage and heat in these grow tents, and it is always nice to see improvements in those areas. If you want to check out the Spider Farmer SE 4500 Evo or any of their other gear for yourself, make sure to click on the link to their website in the video description down below and use the discount code GEEKS at checkout to get 8% off your entire order.